Check it out! For all your drilling needs! How is it going you guys? It's Steven with Break Free Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to make these floating shelves for your kitchen. Your wife is going to be so happy and you're going to be the best DIY person in the town. She's going to show all of her friends and brag about how long it took. Let's get to it guys. Real quick, if this helps you guys out at all, would you please drop down below, hit that like and subscribe button. We create new content every week as we expand our homestead. We got a lot of DIY stuff going on, which is a must have if you're doing homestead stuff. Either way, hand in hand, drop down below. We'd love to have you join our community of people learning how to break free and do things their self. The miss wants these done real bad, so I guess we gotta work on them. I'm sure your miss is telling you to finish the shelves too. So let's get to it. Right here we have some locally sourced ambrosia maple um, that we picked up. And what we're gonna be doing is a 17 or Two 17s here, two 17s there, and then over in the corner, we're gonna have a 36 and I believe like a 28 each way. So two sets of shelves on each section. And we went ahead and cut these down and uh, ripped everything. It's just about seven deep, seven inches deep, and then just under two inches thick. So this has a pretty nice finish. There's no cupping or anything like that since we planed it. Obviously it's not sanded down all the way yet um, because we still have some more work to do with these before we can hang them. If you guys are making some shelves, let us know down below what kind of wood you guys are using. Uh, I think maple's pretty nice. Supposedly ambrosia maple, a defect or these bugs are a defect in the wood. Some people just want maple with no markings on it, but I think this looks pretty cool and we got a pretty good deal on it. So there's a bunch of different options on the internet and Amazon, there's a lot of cheap stuff on there. so. What we went ahead and did was went with some brackets. These are some pretty heavy duty brackets from ultrashelf.com. We'll link it down below. We're not affiliated with them at all, but they do have some quality stuff and they show you a video how to do it. Um, but yeah, each of these holes here, different options to hit different studs. And so we ordered one of these for each shelf, different lengths obviously. But what we have to do now is we have to mill our wood to get it to fit. Wesson. Oh, the cutest little Wesson. All right, guys, so we are down here in the shop. I just went ahead and made this jig uh, to hold our shelves in. And we're to the point where I went ahead and put our bracket on the back. And I measured side to side to make sure it was centered. And then uh, centered widthwise, or uh, like the short side on here centered, okay? I went ahead and marked our posts, and then you can flip it, confirm you're on the right spot after you draw the line, and then we just marked a center point so we can drill. So our starting point for our drill. Let me show you real quick uh, the jig I made. They do sell like jigs for each um, shelf bracket length that you bought. But we bought maybe three different lengths. So we didn't really feel like doing that. And I have the shop and I have some leftover wood so I can just make my own jig. Let me show you. All right, so on the bottom on each side, I have this piece holding it from shaking back and forth. All right, on the ends, this is our longest shelf here. So I have a stop to hold it in. It's really just holding our sides on, and then these are gonna be our guides. It's uh, just a quarter inch plywood ripped, and we're gonna secure that basically right outside of the line where we want our router to be, and this will be the guide for the router bit. So right here, I am screwing in a drill guide provided by UltraShelf. Now, this drill bit I bought off Amazon has a flared end which was catching on this as it wasn't the perfect diameter and it was causing some issues. So I figured I would freehand it and that's not the answer to this problem. Yes, I did freehand this one shelf. Yes, it did go up on the wall. And no, it was not perfect. Do not freehand drill 
especially if you're using these mounts, is not gonna be perfect. All right, you guys, a little bit has passed by since I last worked on this. I ran into some issues with this. What is it? A, uh, ran into some issues with this 13 16 bit right here. I got this off Amazon um, as this drill guide, you know, called for. It was significantly cheaper on Amazon than on their website. But when I got to it, uh, it was giving me some issues and it fits in there 13 16 but so obviously you're drilling the other way it was not going in it's flared out on the top here so it was making it impossible to use it in here it was grinding it up I tried thought I could break through a little bit but it's just way too big so I had to go back and order the one specifically from their website because they're giving me the guide and they know this one works and it does and it's not tapered and uh, we're gonna carry on today I'm gonna try to re um, we're not re drill I'm gonna try to drill this a little bit and straighten these holes out because they weren't perfectly straight that's the problem uh, with doing it by hand so try to fix this up get on the next one don't really like this project the miss is unhappy with me that I haven't been very excited to finish it but uh, if I can get the shelves up then I can do the backsplash and uh, kitchen can be done and she can leave me alone. So that'd be great. So let's get back into it. All right, guys, uh, after much trial and error, I hate this project. Uh, I finally found a way that we can make this work. Like I said, that other drill bit. Hold on, hold on. That wasn't going to work because it was flanged. It's the one we're using now. Uh, I destroyed the other drill bit in an attempt, uh, you know, I have this Ryobi drill 
and then I used it on my Metabo drill and it was just grabbing and it would not go in with a hand drill and I was like, dude, we need a drill press. Go look at drill presses online. They're like $4,000 for something this big. Not gonna happen. Throw the shelves away and no, no shelves. So, got my fully automatic drill here. The Drill Mate by Milescraft. Got it on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Turns my Ryobi into a drill press. Screw this thing into our jig and we're on our way. Hold done in no time. Check it out. Line her up, starter. Secure this bad boy down. All right, guys, this thing is locked in here. Well, it's it's pre-started, but let's back it out. As you can see, this just goes down. It keeps it perfectly straight. Um, you're the drill press. So I'm getting all up in here. Let's check it out. My uh, air hose in here we would use that to just blow it off but we're keeping it old school brooming it off we have our tape marked here um, so we don't drill through you don't want to drill through your uh, your expensive wood shelves so Even this Ryobi drill can just drill right through it because we got the drill mate. Check it out down below. Buy it, help us out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Check it out for all your drilling needs. All right, guys. So these, when you push them in there, uh, our shelf was only about seven inches and this was barely, or eight inches and this was barely less than that. So it's kind of a tight squeeze in there. So what I'm doing is I'm chopping an inch and a half off each one of these. We don't really need it for support because our wood is plenty sturdy. Just using this uh, grinder right here with cut off wheels. Uh, let's get it. You wear all your safety stuff, the, the eyes and the ears and the hands, because you want your hands, you want your eyes and uh, your ears. I mean, mine are already shot, but let's see. All right, guys, long time coming. We're freaking getting it. We're out here milling the back of these shelves out. These things are gonna get done soon. The miss is gonna be very happy. So let's get it. Let's see if we can get this on video right here, all right now. Shuffling through broken glass. Just want to say, if anybody wants to hate on the uh, Ryobi in the comments down below, I just like to say, you know, my Metabo stuff is in the trailer. But 99% of you, this will be fine for you. Rocking your Dewalt in Milwaukee, even though you're doing stuff that Ryobi can do. Just gonna say that. Metabo, Hitachi, Metab, whatever. Let's get this thing done. This thing kind of kicks butt. Got the big battery on there, so we're juicing this thing up. Mill it out.
All right, guys, don't mind the mess. I got these all milled out, and now it is time to sand them. Uh, the planer had a chip in it, so it left a little piece there. So we'll just have to sand those off, and then, uh, yeah, make them nice and smooth, and then we'll put some tongue oil on here. So let's get to it. When I look at your arms now, I still remember how you looked at your pain and just left about it is this one all right guys all of the shelves are sanded up to 800 grit looking pretty darn nice got them laid out here on this table and first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a damp towel with mineral spirits wipe these down get all the dust off then we're going to come back and give it a coat of tongue oil we're just using the uh, terry towel for this. Just Let's get sit it. down and ask questions. Is this what love is? Just sit down and learn your lesson. Is this what love is? Draw in bird as a therapy. All right, guys, so we've let these dry for. Uh, a decent amount of time to get all the mineral spirits out of it and uh, we're gonna give a nice generous coat of the old tongue oil check it out Green pop, nice. All right, two coats of tongue oil all done. The second coat definitely made it a little bit shinier, but I think it still looks good and it'll definitely fade over time. So I'm pretty happy with it. Next step, we gotta get these things up there. What do you say, Mr. Man? Sorry, I'm teeth whitening right now and it's uh, talking a little bit weird, but we'll get through it. All right, you guys, big day. See that? That's a shelf. That's mounted, okay? We get the laser beams going everywhere. Shelves are getting mounted. Let's check it out. I'll show you what we're doing to get these up and nice and straight. I have a nice Hupar laser. Uh, we'll link it down below on Amazon. And it goes all over the place and whatnot. Auto self levels with the tripod so we can go up and down and whatnot. But you might not have one of those. You can get some pretty cheap ones on Amazon or at Lowe's or whatever. They just might not shoot in all the directions. All right, so we'll go over what we're doing. I measured out. We have a, a larger side here and a smaller side here. So we're basing our measurements off the small side, cut it in half, which will leave us an X amount space. I don't even know what the measurement is, three or four inches, just like that. So this will be the same measurement away from the hood on this side. And then, so I went ahead and marked our heights, just in case our laser gets messed up. Then I marked the center. I went ahead and marked, if you can see it, pencil mark on the center of each one of these mounts uh, and I'll hold it up there mark it with a pencil and then then we're using these wall driller um, supports for where we don't have studs hold up to 150 pound each on half inch drywall supposedly supposedly so got four of those we can hold a freak load of weight just kidding it'll probably break but knickknacks are going on these shelves so it should be fine uh, then we're coming down here, we got the 36 and then I think 24 out. So it'll be almost like 36 by 30 
just about. And then we're gonna bump it up to the top of the range hood here. So yeah, let me show you how uh, we're getting this done. Man, when somebody runs around here, my island bounces around a little bit. Mr. Tucker likes to run, so. All right, we're just going on the top of the line, centered here. if that's gonna hit we'll try it though probably not you can just drill these right in but I don't want it to like move on me so So it's pretty darn close. Uh, these boards warped a little bit, so this side does appear on the laser a little bit higher. Um, you can kind of finagle them, but it should be pretty darn close. To the naked eye, I think you'd be all set. This thing is fighting us, but uh, we're right there. So we're gonna hit it a little bit. The rubber mallet, try to protect it. I think it's because the drywall needs to have a little bit of bump in the inside. This one's gonna be a pain in the butt just because we're trying to hit that corner there. So what we're gonna do is measure this corner where it's gonna meet up with the other shelf to the center of our post. And that's where we'll mount it. Guys, I got it in. It looks pretty darn close here. Gap's pretty small. This one is sitting a little bit higher. So what I'll probably do from the top is just add a tiny little hidden screw, pre-drill it and then suck it down just like that um, that way it's perfectly flush let's get this bottom one done it's the last freaking shelf guys I am so excited to be done with this project they look good the nice ambrosia maple but uh yeah I mean you're gonna pay a lot of money if you don't do these yourself but uh it's definitely a lot of work and if your time is money then it might not be worth it for you to make this yourself